A very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this course on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. So, till now we have covered three chapters namely in introduction to MATLAB, some basics of MATLAB programming and uh, signal generation and uh, the basics of probability and uh, the basics of Monte Carlo simulations. Now, before we jump into the simulation of communication systems, there is one more topic that uh, we should look at and those are random processes. How and why these random processes are important for us to simulate uh, communication systems will become apparent or we will become clearer as we move forward. But uh, nonetheless, the first step while uh, looking at the proper simulation of communication systems would be an introduction to random processes. So, in this chapter we will talk about discrete time random processes or as they are called random sequences or autoregressive moving average. So, AR stands for autoregressive and MA stands for moving average random processes. We will talk about regression, we will talk about correlation and uh, we will talk about how practical signals can be seen as uh, uh, autoregressive processes and that will be the kicking point for the use of these ideas in communication systems or uh, that will be the starting point for actually launching into the discussion on communication systems using the techniques that we are learning in this course. So, the first thing that we will talk about are sequences of random variables or discrete time random processes. So, a sequence of random variables or a discrete time random process can be defined in two ways. One, it is a sequence each of whose elements my bad English here. So, e a sequence each of whose elements is a random variable that is, so let me call these definitions 1 and 2 and definition 1. So, x n say x n is a random process, it consists of samples x1 or it can be anything x1, x2, xn in general. Then each xn is a random variable and has a corresponding probability density function. Each xn is a random variable and has a corresponding probability density function. Uh, we will uh, look at this definition in greater detail slightly later. And two, it is a mapping from the sample space to the space of sequences that is for each outcome the sample space there exists it's a deterministic sequence that is if the sample space is denoted by omega then for all xi in omega, where xi 
means one outcome. So, there exists, so for each xi so omega this is the sample space omega, this can be mapped into space of cis and so this is omega, this is xi and this can be mapped into the space of all sequences and this like a random variable this is a deterministic mapping that is given xi xn will be a deterministic sequence or if we know xi then the corresponding sequence will also be known which is similar to our interpretation of a random variable that uh, so in a way a random variable is similar to a random sequence or a random process in a way that uh, a random variable so actually it is better to write this here formally rather than just speak this a random variable is a mapping the sample space, the this random process is a mapping from the sample space to the space of sequences and given the outcome from the sample space the random variable takes a deterministic value. Similarly, the random process also takes values according to a mystic sequence or the random process uh, also takes values according to a deterministic sequence. So, that said we have uh, two definitions of a random process that uh, a sequence each of whose elements is a random variable and a mapping from the sample space to the space of sequences. So, we can say that and we also define the sample function. So, for a random process capital Xn lowercase xn is called the sample function and this should be definitely clarified here sample function. is the sequence of xn corresponding to one outcome. Given xi, xn is uh, deterministic, fine. So, now there are two interpretations of a sample function or uh, finally let me again write this we can view a random process in two ways one random function of time one and two one choice out of 
all the possible functions of time that could have happened. So, one choice out of all the possible functions of time that could have happened. So, what is important here to understand is that uh, the same idea of a random process can be interpreted in two different ways and uh, it is the interplay between these two definitions of random processes that uh, make their uh, study so interesting and uh, that uh, allow us to simulate them actually. So, and the properties of random processes are also centered around uh, these two definitions. So, uh, it is good to keep these definitions in mind as well as uh, we will continue to revisit these definitions whenever needed, but uh, it is good to keep these in mind uh, as such, fine. So, the next thing that uh, we would want to define is the PDF and the CDF of uh, random processes. So, let me copy this, paste this. So, looking at uh, the first definition of random processes that is, so from the first definition. that is being a sequence of random variables, we can define the probability density function and the CDF of these, since there are multiple random variables, we can define the PDF and the CDF of these random variables. So, the nth order CDF, I will rewrite this nth order CDF of a random process is defined in terms of the small n in is defined in terms of the n random variables x l1 to x ln so here l1 ln are L1 to Ln are time indices. So, these are defined in terms of the n random variables x L1 to Ln and uh, L1 to Ln are time indices. So, the joint CDF of x L1 to Ln is given as, so this should be Ln typo. So, f x L1 x L2 x ln x l1 ln is defined as the probability that x at time index l1 takes a value less than or equal to x l1 x capital x l2 takes a value less than or equal to l2 and so on. So, this is the probability and uh, since this notation becomes uh, slightly complicated, so we drop the random variables here and just look at the pseudo values that are small x1, xl1 to small xln. So, this is how we define the cumulative distribution function and similarly, we define the probability density function. So, for a single random variable, the probability density function is the derivative of the CDF with respect to the value that the cumulative distribution function can take and uh, the derivative of the cumulative distribution function. 
So, in case of n random variables, this should be n, I will just correct this, this is a typo. So, uh, I will just correct this, hold on. So, you can interpret this as the nth order derivative or nth order partial derivative with respect to all the CDFs. So, you differentiate in the space of the first random variable with respect to that, in the second, in the space corresponding to the second random variable with respect to that and uh, when you bunch all of these up, you get the, this is the nth order joint PDF. So, when I teach a course on probability, there is entire chapter dedicated to two random variables and multiple random variables. So, since uh, we have uh, skipped that because uh, there are other things to do in this course, we are focusing more on communication systems rather than probability theory, but still a physical interpretation is needed. So, probability x l 1 a 1 b 1 x l 2 a 2 b 2 these sets can be semi open semi closed or open or closed based on whatever you want I am just using open sets for simplicity x these can be semi open semi closed or closed as well x l n a n equals n dimensional surface integral or the probability that the random variables lie within the so consider an n dimensional surface within the n dimensional space and uh, the probability that uh, these n random variables lie within that surface is how you define this integral and naturally the CDF will also be defined as an order and integral going from minus infinity to the corresponding values. So, this is how you define the joint PDF and joint CDF in case of a random process and uh, note that in this case this is also important a discrete random process has countably infinite values. A discrete time random process has countably infinite values, but we define the CDFs and the PDFs only for nth order time n can be as large possible or n can be as large as we want or possible is the wrong word can be as large as want, but we still have to ensure that uh, unlike uh, a single random variable or two random variables, we cannot define, we cannot expect to define the probability density function or the cumulative distribution function of a random process. We can only say that uh, we define the probability density function or the cumulative distribution function of a random process for the nth order that is uh, something that needs to uh, be taken care of or it is very important to note that uh, this is not for a general random process. A random process, a general random process will always have countably infinite values. So, all these functions are defined for random processes or uh, the PDF and the CDF are defined for random processes for their nth order sub processes or you basically what you are doing is you are first reducing or while defining the PDF or the CDF, you are first reducing the corresponding random process to an n-dimensional random vector and then 
defining the probability density function or the cumulative distribution function for that. So, this n can be as large as you want, but it is still finite. So, you, we have to bear this in mind while doing all the math. So, here are a few operators that uh, we would want to work with. So, the first operator that we use is uh, the mean function that is the expected value of x n or rather so this is defined for for each instant in time this is defined for each instant in time and this is given as so over a single random variable this this so here we are taking the value that x n takes the value x so this is naturally since interpret random process function of time this mean is also defined the function of this mean is also defined as a function of time fine this is the first function that we'll use the second function that uh, we'll talk about is the correlation function this is the time and this is the lag. So, the autocorrelation function is generally defined in terms of two variables time and lag or equivalently actually let me do this, this way. So, let me define autocorrelation in this way. So, autocorrelation function actually defined or can be defined in two ways R x x n 1 and n 2 equals expected value of x n 1 n 2 conjugate As conjugation is important the so this is defined at absolute time indices time indices n1 and n2. So, this equals x n1 x n2 f x n1 x n2 or let me call this x1 and x2 for simplicity x1 x2 dx1 dx2 minus infinity to infinity this so the entire space this beast alternatively letting n1 equal to n and n2 equals minus l with i can put a conjugate here to complete that yes being the lag between n1 and n2 we can write or also write this as expected value of x n1 x conjugate n minus l with l being the lag. So, the autocorrelation at time n for a lag l. So, this becomes x1 x2 f x then x n minus l x1 
x2. So, both these definitions or both these notations are used to define the autocorrelation function. So, now the question is why do we need the these two notations to define a property that uh, will become clear when we talk about the properties of uh, random processes. So, this and the third function that we are going to talk about today is called the autocovariance so or the covariance function. So, actually this is the autocorrelation function and this is the autocovariance function. So, the correlation function is defined for two random processes x and y this is the autocorrelation mean function, autocorrelation function and autocovariance function. Similarly, the autocovariance function is defined like this for a time index n and a lag l as per uh, what is the physical significance of this. So, this is the same as how the covariance is related to correlation and this normalizes correlation by subtracting the mean this can equivalently be written as expected value of x n x or you can show that this can be reduced to x conjugate n minus l minus x n x n minus l this. So, this is uh, how you define the basic properties of random variables that mean covariance and uh, uh, since we are talking about it and we have defined this as autocorrelation, so maybe just not taking much time, we can also do this for two random for two random processes. So, like there was one random process, we can extend this idea to two random processes, we can extend it to as many random processes as we want, but uh, for two random processes say x n and y n mu x n is the mean function of x n and is the expected value of x n mu y n is expected value of y n this and the cross correlation function is given as r x y. I will use the time and lag definition. You can equivalently use the absolute time index n 1 n 2 definition as well, but uh, for the rest of this course we will be using the time and lag definition. So, expected value of x n y conjugate n minus l this is the cross correlation function. Again, you can define it in terms of double integral f x n y n minus l x y x y dx dy. So, this will be the joint pdf of x n and y n minus l. So, joint pdf of x n and this piece. Similarly, the cross covariance function the cross covariance function of x and y is given as expected value of x n minus mu x y n minus conjugate that can be shown to be x n sorry n minus l x n minus x n y n minus l mu this x n I conjugate minus L minus mu x n mu y conjugate L this piece. 
or you can write it in terms of the cross correlation function as well. So, there are many interpretations to this. The only thing is that uh, with these basic definitions in mind, in the next lecture we will look at three properties or we will basically look at two properties of random processes. They are stationarity and the second is and these are the two properties that will help us uh, simulate these random processes later. So, that is all for now. Thank you. Thank you.